In this video, we create a custom script extension to configure new and existing Azure VMs. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and welcome to my channel. I create a lot of VMs in Azure for testing. Inevitably, there are a few OS settings I need to take care of when I first log in. In this video, we look at how to use custom script extensions in Azure to automate configuration settings and install applications, reducing the overall deployment time. Before we get started, please don't forget to like and subscribe and share the video with a friend. Also, check out my courses on Windows 365 and Intune Management, Azure Virtual Desktop, A Beginner's Guide to the AZ900, and Hybrid Identities with Windows AD and Enter ID. Links are in the description below. And a big thanks to my channel members. Your support is appreciated. Back to it. A custom script extension is a service in Azure that downloads and runs a script on an Azure Virtual Machine. This gives us a lot of flexibility to customize the virtual machines. We can use custom script extensions when we deploy a VM or VM scale set. The custom script extension can be used when deploying VMs through the portal or as part of an ARM, Azure CLI, or PowerShell deployment. They're also available after the deployment. If we need to run a PowerShell script to make a configuration change or install software on an existing VM, for example. As just mentioned, custom scripts for Windows VMs use PowerShell. There are many things we can do on a Windows VM using PowerShell, but for some, using PowerShell may be a drawback. Obviously, you need to know PowerShell to write the script. I provide an example in the demo that shows options to deploy software and make configuration changes. This would be a good reference for anyone starting with custom script extensions. When I create scripts, I always start writing the scripts and testing interactively to verify it works without errors before submitting it to any automation job like custom script extensions, and then test again with automation. I also make sure to add logging. Adding logging to the script makes errors easier to find. The custom script extension runs unattended under the local system account. Make sure your code runs without requiring any user interaction. No one will be logged in to reply to a prompt. When creating scripts, make them item potent. This means that they can be run multiple times and always get the same results. We don't want to install an application, for example, if it's already installed. There's a 90 minute limit for custom script extensions to run. After that, it'll time out. That should be plenty of time for most use cases, but keep that in mind for long running tasks. Also, if there's an error and the script doesn't quit, you'll have to wait for that timeout. Finally, don't restart, stop, or update the VM agent in the script. That could lead to a timeout. The custom script extension won't restart once the VM is back online. Let's review the script we'll use as an example and then deploy it on an existing and new VM. We are at the script we'll run in the upcoming demo. You can find a link to this PowerShell script in the comments below. You may or may not find the actual content of this script useful. The goal when I created it was to provide some different examples that someone could use as a launching point for their own script. It starts with a description, notes, and disclaimer. Test it before you trust it. Then we have a set of variables. These are hard-coded. This example doesn't use parameters, but you can modify these to fit your own environment. It has a log and download directory. We'll download some files later on in the code. The VM time zone will be set by the script. You can locate the correct name of your time zone with the tzutil forward slash l command, as noted on the screen. We also set the owner and organization information. Update that to your info. There's also a URL to a bginfo configuration file. You can use that if you'd like or upload your own version for your environment. This one just happens to point at one I configured and added to my GitHub account. I don't plan on removing it, but you may want a different configuration. The next section will create the logging directory and the logging function. You'll notice that there's a lot of tests in the code. This is so we can run the code multiple times without impacting anything that was configured in a previous run. That makes the script item potent. After that, it checks for and creates a download directory. There are also a lot of comments written to the log. That helps with troubleshooting. The commands use a try catch block, so if a command does run into an error, the error message gets written to the log. Then it sets the time zone. This is an example of simply running a PowerShell command. After that, it tests for some registry keys and values for the system owner and organization. This is an example of making registry changes. I don't normally update the owner and organization information. I'm just using it as an example here. Something else I like doing is using the region and region comments. With that, we can collapse the block of code if we need to hide a section for some reason. It helps organize the code. 
Next, it checks for bginfo.exe, and if it's not in the download directory, it downloads the application zip file from sysinternals. The file's downloaded with the invoke web request command using basic parsing. Basic parsing should be used, or you might run into an error message about the Internet Explorer engine not being available. Will we ever see an end to Internet Explorer? After that are some commands to extract that zip file that was downloaded. Next, it downloads the bginfo configuration file with the .bgi extension. Again, this is located in my GitHub directory, and you're welcome to use it. If you want to create your own, just run bginfo setup and create a customized .bgi file, then host it someplace publicly available. By the way, if you want to add some security around publicly available files, you can put them in a blob storage container and then use a SAS URL to access them. The files will be available over the public internet, but will require a secure access signature or SAS to access them. That's much more private than hosting them on a public GitHub repository. The next step is more PowerShell code. This adds a shortcut to bginfo in the Start Menu Startup folder. This is an old school way of launching an application at startup. Again, these are all examples of what you can do, not necessarily what you should do. I honestly rarely use bginfo anymore, but I wanted to include it anyway as an example of how to download and extract files. Finally, the last example uses Chocolaty to download and install Chrome. It first checks to see if Chocolaty is installed, and if not, it will install it. Then it tests to see if Chrome is installed, and if not, it runs the Chocolaty installer for Chrome. This is a powerful option for automating the deployment of applications on new and existing VMs in Azure. Why not use Winget? That's only available on the client OS, so we couldn't use it on Windows Server. Also, I've had a lot of problems installing Winget applications at the machine scope. That's it. I've already ran this interactively and know it works. Let's use a custom script extension to deploy it on an existing and new VM next. Before we do that, though, we have to upload this file to an Azure storage account. Here we are at the Azure portal. Let's add the script to a storage account next. This step makes it available for the custom script extension. This example will use an existing storage account. You can create one if needed. It's just a simple standard blob storage account. Let's go to data storage containers. If you don't have a container, add one. For this example, we'll use CSE demo. Let's upload our custom script. We'll browse for that file. And we'll open it. And upload. And although this script doesn't actually use it, I'll also upload the bginfo configuration file. Instead of using the version I supplied in the GitHub account, you could upload your own to the storage account. Then use a SAS-based URL in the script to download the file. We can get that by clicking on the three dots next to the file. Generate SAS. This has the permissions of read. You can set a start and end time. And keep in mind when that end time is reached, the SAS URL will no longer work. We'll generate the SAS token and URL. And the URL will be available under blob SAS URL. But we don't need that for this example. You would want to add that to the custom script before you upload it, of course. That would provide some security on the files hosted on the blob storage account. Now that we have that in place, let's test it on an existing VM. Then we'll use it when we build a new one. Here we are in the Azure portal. At a VM, we'll run the custom script extensions on. Let's go to Settings and open Extensions and Applications. Add an extension. From here, we can see all the extensions available. We want a custom script extension. Select that and click Next at the bottom. We need to provide the script to run. Select Browse and locate the storage account we uploaded the file to. And then open the container with a custom script. Select the custom script. It's the one with the PowerShell.ps1 extension. And select. We could provide parameters if needed. This script doesn't require those. Go to Review and Create. And select Create to start the custom script extension on the Azure VM. In the background, the custom script extension will download the script and then submit it to the server to run. This will take a couple minutes. The video will pause here until it's finished. The custom script extension is finished, and we can now log into the server and verify everything ran correctly. Here we are at the server. Let's take a look at the desktop. We have the Chrome icon and BG info on the desktop, and the time is set to Central US. Those were all included in the script. And if we run WinVer, 
it shows the correct owner and organization. Next, let's go to File Explorer. And if we go to the C drive, we have the download and log directory. Let's open up the log directory. We'll take a look at the log. We can see all the output from the script to the log file. Everything here looks good. That's great, the custom script extension worked. Next, let's use a custom script extension to configure a VM at deployment. Let's go back to the Azure portal and let's deploy a virtual machine through the portal. This example will deploy a server 2022 data center. This will work on most Windows VMs. I'll skip ahead to the part that's relevant to this video, the Advanced tab. Here we are at the Advanced tab. At the top, we have Extensions. Let's open that. This should look familiar. Locate Custom Script Extensions and click Next. Just like before, we have to browse to our storage account. Open the container and select that custom PowerShell script. Click Create. That adds the extension. We'll go to Review and Create. And Create. This too will take a minute to finish. The video will pause here until it finishes the deployment. We'll come back once it's done and I'm logged into the server. The build finished and here we are logged into the new Windows server. And here again, we have BG Info and Chrome on the desktop. The clock is set to Central US also. Let's open the log directory. There it is. And if we open the log file, everything looks good in the log file. But what if it's not? Hopefully the logging function will provide a clue to any problem. If not, there are a couple additional locations to check. From the VM, navigate to C Windows Azure Logs Plugins Microsoft.Compute.CustomScript Extension. And then select the version number. This directory has the log files for the extension. You can search these logs to troubleshoot an issue. Also, if we go to the directory C Packages Plugins Microsoft.Compute.CustomScript Extensions and go to Downloads. Here we have the files downloaded when the custom script extension ran. The information in these two locations may help identify any problems you run into. That is how to use custom script extensions from the Azure portal. I hope that helps you better understand how to create and run custom script extensions in Azure. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.